the one five ninth aspect of nakshatras are important to consider and we'll tell the rules of why it is so you'll find out in a minute check your ascendant number one ascendant angle the cusp of your ascendant whatever planet is close to the ascendant especially if it is rahu ketu or jupiter are close to that cusp close to your ascendant angle that's the first rule number two if rahu or jupiter are your atma karaka we shall speak about this much later on number three if rahu and ketu are in one seven axis the first and the seventh axis number four if other planets are in conjunction with rahu ketu or jupiter in specific nakshatras the focus being on specific nakshatras and we'll deal with all the nine types of nakshatras here really number five and the most important if you have an exchange of lordship between the lords of nakshatras and or the dominance of one ruler of nakshatras in your chart for example if you have mercury and moon exchanging lords okay and then you have mercury dominated nakshatras this will be important and if jupiter is in that particular nakshatra of mercury you see what i'm saying so you got to check which the ruler of the nakshatra is we have nine types basically nine classifications of three nakshatras each which makes it 27 so let's get into it so if you're looking at the chart you see rahu is fifth and ninth aspects this is the fifth aspect of rahu we are taking first and seven axis as an example this is a blank chart any chart okay so rahu if it sits here fifth aspect is looking at the fifth house and ninth aspect is looking at the ninth house from the first so this is being one this being fifth this being ninth in a similar way if you see ketu on the other side because it's diagonally opposite it will sit on the other side its fifth aspect is the eleventh house from the seventh house and its ninth aspect is the third house this is how ketu will behave if you take jupiter and Jupiter, if it's sitting in the 10th house, for example, its 5th aspect is the 2nd house and ninth aspect is the 6th house. So this being the 1, this being the 5 and this being the 9. This is very important to consider. Why do we say so? Because now if you see 90% of your chart, whoever your chart is, wherever Rahu, Ketu and Jupiter are placed, just these three points have a dominant influence on the rest of the chart apart from these blanked out ones which you see in the original color rahu has impact on these brown houses ketu has impact on these light brown houses jupiter on these yellow houses in our example this is the singular reason why it's very very crucial for you to understand these videos okay and i will get into one by one one of the nakshatras after this introduction but before that, we shall consider for the purposes of this study, Rahu is the point of focus and drive where you want to go in this lifetime. Ketu as past life conquered territory or your karma which you have already learnt and knowledge and finished. Ketu brings all the past life into this life. So whatever you learnt experience and knowledge, whatever you are already an expert in is Ketu. Jupiter as the point of wisdom where you need to take assistance off okay consider it like that in this particular aspect now let's get into the nakshatras now let's discuss the sun nakshatras the 159 code of the sun nakshatras <clears throat> which are these guys kritika uttra falguni and uttra shada as marked by the white triangle over there we're going to be rotating this triangle all around the clock okay so the, wherever your Rahu, Ketu or Jupiter, if it sits in this axis, you need to get some lessons from these. You need to implement some wisdom you have and drive you have from these. Ketu being past life wisdom, Rahu being your current drive in this lifetime and Jupiter which brings in the wisdom. Okay. So the first Pada, as you can see, the first exalted pada in sun nakshatras, all three of them, is the first sign, which is still in the fire sign of Aries, Leo and Sagittarius, going into Sagittarius. See, Navamsha going into Sagittarius, yes. 
we shall see towards the end that is the most exalted form of sun nakshatras the first and the last as well so going from aries to sagittarius in case of kritika going from leo to sagittarius in the sign of leo and now i'm sure going from sagittarius going towards sagittarius the most exalted form which is in Uttarashada, right? We are going through Pluto in Uttarashada, so it's better pay attention to this. The second Pada, on the other hand, goes into Capricorn in all three, like you can see. Second Pada to Capricorn in Amamsha, here also Capricorn, there also Capricorn. This is Capricorn going into Capricorn. Now we have moved into the Earth side once again, the most exalted Pada. If you don't know what I'm talking about, go through my other videos on Uttarashada. There's plenty of them okay so second pada the third step or pada is going into aquarius as you can see aquarius to aquarius to aquarius right so the aquarian sign will give you a lot of unorthodox unconventional modes of functioning it is very quick to react it's all about gains from the outer world okay so this will be more driven on unconventional leadership so to speak the Capricorn, the second will be driven on conventional leadership. The last one, the fourth Pada, shifts to Pisces. This is the second most exalted form of this nakshatra, Sun nakshatra. <coughs> and these are the four steps it will take. Now before we go further, let us examine shortly what are the general characteristics of all these three guys? Kritika, Uttra, Falguni and Uttra Ashada. What are the general characteristics? Why are they called Sun Nakshatras? Which plays out for a period of 7 years, I think, 6 years, something. Let's see. Now, what are the general characteristics of these three Sun Nakshatras? Kritika, Uttra, Falguni and Uttra Ashada. Sun, think of sun, think of fifth house, think of government, think of leadership and governance, all kind of leadership attributes, the pluses and the minuses of those. So the general characteristics are number one, governing authority. They think of themselves as authority, like a king, like government. Self-confidence is very high in these individuals, especially if Rahu, Ketu and Jupiter are sitting in these vertices, okay? In any one of the four Padas. Going into Navamsha, it will act differently, of course. They have very high ego, lots of ego issues. Both Sun and Mars nakshatras have this in common, we shall come to Mars once later. High ego they are natural born leaders. They do not take instructions very well. They do not read manuals properly. They are not detail oriented people. So detail is not a part of their strength. Okay, They are just wanting leadership. They want to quickly move on from their vision onto implementation without thinking. This is the weak point. Eventually, people will say that this person is good but has ego issues, anger issues. Very short-tempered could be a negative point. Why? That brings us to number three. Vision drives them a lot. They are wanting to chase their visions, which they get a lot, at all costs, without reflecting, analyzing and thinking out details. Think about this for a second. This is the problem with Sun Nakshatras in general. Have a lot of vision, no follow through, no going into details. This is what these people must learn to avoid. Okay. Now let us wrap this up by saying finally, what is the commonality and how we can get these people across? Okay. So how do we wrap this up? How do we wrap up the Sun Nakshatras? First of all, always look for patterns. The highest exaltation point of Sun Nakshatras are in Dharma Pada, first one and last one, Moksha Pada. As you can see, these two are highlighted here. This one you can't see because both are green. Okay, so what does it signify? 
If it is in Dharmapada, which is all fire signs going into fire signs in all the three, Kritika, Uttrafalguni, Uttrashada, Aries to Sagittarius, Leo to Sagittarius in Navamsa and Sagittarius to Sagittarius, the highest exaltation. Think of sun and sun characteristics and the native sign which is here, Aries, Taurus, Leo going into Virgo and Sagittarius going into Capricorn. Think those things and also bring in the sun characteristics which is fiery, ego, leadership, etc. So in Aries, like I said, sun is a visionary. It wants to bring in ideas. So it can they can be excellent critical thinkers. They can be excellent trainers, training skills. They have a very sharp speech like the sun. No nonsense. Perfectionist like the sun. For them, it's important to set goals. They can become chefs, by the way, going into Taurus because it's about food, second house. And also they are having a very independent approach because again, sun. Having foster parents, this is another theme of the nakshatra. You can look up other nakshatras, right? Like they might be born under C-section, for example, if Kritika is falling in the fifth house. Just an example here. They have unusual births. Their goal is using internal fuel to ignite the internal fire to transform your life. That is productive energy to others. The sun needs to learn that it is all about giving energy to others. Not so much about yourself. Okay. That's what sun needs to learn here. Coming to Uttra Falguni, on the other side, we have Leo going into Virgo. So think everything sixth house. And yet Dharma is exalted and Moksha is exalted. The first Pada and the last Pada. Uttra Falguni themes are success through partnerships, marriage. Think of Leo and Sagittarius. Enduring relationships. They have usually late relationships, Uttra Falguni people. But they, after they get married, they kind of get success. Charity, adventurous charity going into Virgo, going into Pisces, see, exalted form. Pisces is charity. Negotiation, friendly, happy, righteous, kind people. Okay. Again, the first Pada. Think of the first Pada and the last Pada, most exalted form of Uttra Falguni. They are about favors, action oriented, management and delegation, Virgo going into Capricorn, Virgo going into Aquarius. Yes, both are management type creatures. Think of investments, think of contracts, legal deals, Virgo, sixth house of debt, right? All the debts which are there is Virgo. All the daily grind is Virgo. Commitments, contracts, legal contracts, their work. Initial struggles in life, again, Virgo, sixth house. Later, successful, later on in life. Okay, that could be a theme. So they are about ethics, rules and tradition. Once again, Virgo and Leo as well. Life lesson, strength and wealth maintain a marriage. So think from Purva Falguni, which was about relationships, Venus ruled Nakshatra, you jump into sun. Now you're going to sustain a family, sustain that Leo energy, highest exaltation. Now Uttra Falguni needs to learn how to bring about grounding Virgo. Okay, they need to do that in their life. Coming over to Uttrashada, the final culmination of sun. Maintaining victory through responsibility. Now we come from Sagittarius to Capricorn. Okay. Highest form of Sagittarius. If your Jupiter is sitting here, it becomes the highest Dharma looking at both. Okay. Exalted in Sagittarius. Working for a larger collective Capricorn, Capricorn going into Capricorn, for example. Okay. So within Uttrashada, 
The sun rules for the masses. Capricorn going into Capricorn. Yet the highest exaltation is within Sagittarius. All the significations combined with the significations of sun. Victory of good over negativity. See? Capricorn going into Capricorn. High ideals. Positive ancestral connections. Sun is all about ancestry. Especially if Uttarashada Capricorn appears in the fifth house. Okay? They can become workaholics. Capricorn is a workaholic. Yes? Establishment of institutions. Once again Capricorn. They are very orthodox Capricorn, finding practical applications Capricorn, needs to be receptive. Capricorn has difficult time going into Aquarius being receptive. It's all about more of what I want to bring to the rest of the world kind of approach. Yes. Life lesson being individual wisdom and action merging with collective cause is the ultimate victory. Uttra Ashada being very powerful nakshatra of highest exaltation of Sagittarius, highest exaltation of Capricorn and yet having two Dharma as well as Moksha Padas as exalted. Very powerful nakshatra. <clears throat> so here is where you might say the sun learns how to do things for others in Uttra Ashada nakshatra. Finally, the job of the sun is to give light to the world, yes? So as a leader, your job is to do things for others, not be self-centered. That's the life lesson of sun, really. Okay, so watch for if Rahu, Ketu or Jupiter sits in any one of these apex of this triangle, then you have a clue about what you need to do with these nakshatras, the 159 of nakshatras. Next, we shall deal with Mars nakshatras. I think that's what's next on our list. Let me just check for you. Next we shall see moon rule nakshatras after sun. Meanwhile, take care, be safe, leave your comments, suggestions, if any. I'll see you in the next. Thank you.